uh, Philip Ryan from the Irish Independent. Philip. Um, I was hoping there's been some confusion over the last few days. There's been a lot of talk of, from yourself about inaccuracies and misrepresentations and things like that. So I was hoping that we could just talk through some of those issues so we could get some clarity on them for the viewers and, and the readers. Um, the first thing is, you, you've heard every minister, Taoiseach, and uh, across the board saying they listen to your voice. They are guided by it at all times. That, that's constantly the mantra. You've heard that. On Friday, you sent them the, what you call the public health approach in providing advice to the government in relation to reducing social distancing measures introduced in response to COVID-19. Do you agree well, on that? Presume, yeah? it's, it's, it's that document. Yeah, that you agree to that. Very, very yeah. clearly, yeah, it's published and available. Of see, course, yeah. on gov.e. And in that document, there is some recommendations through the phases for older people. In phase two, it, it talks about lifting the restrictions for ease um, around shopping and some visitors. That's correct. And in, in phase five, it says, continue cocooning of over 70s and extremely medical vulnerable until later phases due to higher risk. In the fifth phase of the document that you gave to the government. That's correct? Yes. That's correct. It also says in that document in regard to face coverings that the rollout guidance for wearing face coverings in the community. So they issued the guidance in phase two of that document. You didn't put dates, they put dates. That was against your guidance as well. Because you agree that that is in the document in phase two. Well, but I hear you saying to me as you pass along there that this was against our advice. It, it no, isn't. no, no, I'm just saying these are the facts and that that is in phase two. We identified an interval of three weeks between each of the phases it set out in this document as well. You'll see it yeah. if you read I, it. I have read it, yeah. yeah. But you, you agree that you, you recommended that advice be rolled out on face coverings in phase two. So, so as I said, and I said it here again last night, and you may not have been here, uh, we gave clear advice that we, we do see a role for face coverings in certain settings. Uh, we needed to give that signal, if you like, at an early stage so that as part of our preparations uh, for introduction of that as a measure, we would have things ready in terms of... And uh, that's why you put it into the document. It's one of the reasons we put it into the document. That work is now happening on a cross-government basis. We're cooperating with a number of other government departments. Meetings have taken place already this week involving other government departments and ourselves to do exactly that. Right. Uh, but, and yeah, but just on the but, point of the inaccuracies and misrepresentations, those, that's in your document that you published and gave to the government, emailed for them to read before they published their own. So if you're using words like inaccuracies and misrepresentations. But that's what you used yesterday. No, I didn't use words like inaccuracies and misrepresentations. Well, you 100% did. I was watching. So no, no, I'm, 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 I'm telling you what, 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 what I'm saying to you is, uh, we set out the advice very clearly here. Uh, the, the advice, advice the government say they always follow. Yes, and the, the, the national plan, and I explained this last night, and I'll explain it again. The national plan obviously is a, is, a, is a different document that contains a range of other considerations. It takes the, the key extracts of our plan and puts it into the national plan in a way which isn't consistent with all of the advice that we've given. If, and I'm but, absolutely clear on that. But the, the national plan that was issued and published after a cabinet meeting where it was agreed to remove parts of your advice, specifically around cocooning, the over 70s. Now, you don't go no. to the cabinet meeting, but I would presume you were That's alerted right. to the fact well, that you removed that bit. But, it, but if, if, you, if you were correct on, on, on your interpretation of the facts that you're relying upon, mm -hmm. uh, then, then what, I, what, I, what I've been saying all along, uh, uh, which is that the measures in relation to cocooning, what was identified in our documents, apply all the way through at all of the phases. Uh, in other words, we will have stricter, if I can put it that way, measures in place for people who are in those categories of vulnerable, uh, vulnerability, if you like, to this infection, whether it's by reason of age or by reason of medical uh, uh, conditions. There will always be stricter measures all the way through. Uh, there's nothing in the government All the way until August. At every stage, mm. once there's a risk of disinfection, we will have measures that are focused on you as a vulnerable person that, 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 that represent, if you like, our desire to try and give greater protection to you mm. because, of the represent, because of the risk that this infection Yes, you said it was, you. in your words, simply not true that cocooning, that it was your advice that cocooning should keep going to August. But you're just saying that the restrictive behaviour that older people will have to endure will go no, on. I think you're, misun you know, you're misunderstanding that, if you don't mind I, me saying. I, I don't think so. No, I, I think you are. I'm going off what you're saying. So what I said, and again, I said it yesterday, we said it last Friday, we gave this advice to government and it was accepted and followed. But cocooning measures that we would, we would continue to, to recommend that people stay at home, but we would introduce measures to try and make it as easy as possible for people to cope with that. If your interpretation was correct, that we only saw, co we saw cocooning measures as they currently are, stay based until phase five, then, then that's not correct. You've no, that's not what I'm saying, but it is very clear from the document that older people 
are now being left indoors for into the sixth week, will not get to enjoy the reopening of society that the rest of people will enjoy. So the cocooning that you said, the restrictive measures, will still remain in place for most people in that age group until age five. So uh, it's important you understand this. There will always be a more strict set of recommendations in place for people in those categories all the way through. Mm. The reason for that is because of the risk that this virus poses while we think there's a risk of you picking this virus up for your health. These people have suffered the burden of this infection. Uh, and it's not that we've left them at home. It's a recommendation that we have that people should stay at home for their own protection. Uh, it's also a recommendation that so applies it is, to people. It is true then you, that you are recommending that the restrictor, the restrictor regime is in place until the later phases. No, no, I think, again, you're misinterpreting, if you don't mind, Philip. Mm -hmm. So at a point in time, whatever measures are in place for the general society, there will be something stricter and more restricted exactly at a said. point in time. Yeah, no, it said. isn't. You're, what you're suggesting is that the measures that are currently in place will stay in place as they are until phase five. That's not correct. But anyway, you agree that both of but those terms... Do, do, I just want you to accept that what you're saying, that it's not correct. What that there's stricter regime so, for so older people until later phases no as we go through, as we go through mm. at any point in time the measures that are there for general society which we'll seek to ease will also ease for people in cocooning uh, in that category but will still be stricter at any point in time than that's they not are what it read population. like in the original report but, but i think you accepted no, both you, those pieces of but then you've misinterpreted it well why was it removed then maybe the cabinet misinterpreted it as well. But anyway, both of those sections were removed from the final document. You've said I'm, that I'm just going to hold on this point because I think it's, it's important that you no. don't misunderstand. So there is no point in that document, no point in what I'm saying to you now or said to government that said, we think that the current range for cocooning should stay in place as they are until phase five. No, it was never said, the, it was never cocooning the to over 70s and extremely medical be vulnerable until later phases due to higher risk. That's you're, you're placing that interpretation on that, but you're That's incorrect. That's the words that, that are in the document that was removed from but, the document. Do you accept that that does not mean that the current arrangements that apply to cocooning continue until phase five? Oh, no, no. Some sort of cocooning is, is suggested. But some, anyway, that some, was... That, some, yeah, sorry, that was removed from the document. Some point of additional measures. So but I think the, the final thing I will not ask, and this is my final question, is that on Friday in, in this room, I think you were asked about, about I, wasn't, the, I wasn't in this room on Friday. Sorry, wherever the, the briefing was on Friday. It was in, it was in government buildings. Apologies, in government That's buildings. Okay. And the, the question was asked, was there any changes, tweaks or variations to this document? And the health minister, Simon Harris, said, um, he said, I think the document is very clear in that regard. I'm very pleased as the health minister that the document is public health led. So yes, we've accepted the recommendations of, of the National Public Health Emergency Team in full as I always do on the document today, I think it is fair to say is consistent with your advice. He turns to you and you say yes fully. And that's correct. But so nothing you've heard, nothing you've heard and nothing I'm saying says or allows you to conclude that the advice that we give and we gave in relation to this document was not accepted by government in the plan that was set out. But they removed the, the, the points. You've pointed to textual changes and you've placed an incorrect interpretation on them. That's not the same as saying that our advice was not accepted. It was accepted, it's in the document, it's clearly set out. And I don't have a reservation about that. 